Today, horsepower is helping out the guys from trucks. An air tank, all kinds of body parts, even a steering column. Man, they've got a lot more work to do than us. Just check out this bed. The front clip don't look too good either, but at least they got it blasted, so you know what they got to work with. Well, our mission on horsepower today is to rebuild a motor for this old C10. Nothing fancy, just a basic small block for what hopefully becomes a classic daily driver. And you know what? Those guys in trucks are going to owe us big after this. Kevin and Ryan brought it in a few weeks ago, pulled the old motor, shortened the frame and bed, powder coated the frame, and installed an air ride suspension system. Hey, you don't have to guess where the motor went. Right. We completely tore down the old 283 last week, first draining the fluids, then removing accessories, water pump, intake, and of course valve train. Then after the oil pan came off, we removed the timing set. Next, we pulled the cam out, removed the rods and pistons, and finally the crankshaft, getting it completely ready for machining. All right, buddy, you brought the 283 back for trucks. Now, what all did you do to it down at the shop? Well, once we got it down here, we cleaned it. I bored it to the piston, honed in the clearances, then cleaned it again, painted it, and brought it back. Cool. Did you run in any surprises or anything during the machine nope. work? Everything worked really good on this one. In fact, it still had the GM bearings in it. Cool. Well, let's put it together. All right. All the bearings for this rebuild came from seal power. And first, we're using the installation tool to install the cam bearings. And don't forget to line up the oil hole in the bearing with the oil groove in the block. And here's our rotating assembly, including the original crank that we had turned and balanced for our pistons and rods. Oh, and speaking of that, our original rods before and after. That is after reconditioning and resizing with new ARP bolts. Now, we did have to spring for new rings and these seal power pistons, flat top aluminum pieces. To hang the pistons on the rods, you heat up the piston a little bit. Then the small end of the rod. Now the wrist pin slides into the rod pretty easily. Okay, there is a front and back to every piston and rod. Now on the pistons, they'll either be marked with a little F, a notch, or an arrow. Once you determine where the front is and you know what cylinder is going in, on a Chevrolet motor, the bearing notches will point down. Okay, rod bearings are next. Now, if these happen to be high performance or racing bearings, there is an upper and a lower, but these being standard, there is none, so they go in any location. So you line up your bearing tang and bearing tang on the rod, put it in. Same thing with the cap. Okay, after installing your rod bearings, you wanna check your clearances between your rod bearing and your crankshaft. When I was doing the machine work on these, I already did that. Your clearances should be two to three thousandths. Okay, I'm working the piston to do my triangulation for my oil ring. Your expander ring will go on this mark. When you install it, make sure the two gaps stay together. Then your other oil ring will start down here on this other line. Put the bottom one on first. Okay, your second ring will have a dot that goes up. Top ring will also have a dot that also goes up. And that's it. Over here, the rear main seal can go into place. And after thoroughly cleaning the saddles, I'm ready to install the bearings and some assembly lube. And finally, we'll drop the crank into place. Now with the bearings and lube on the caps, we can drop them on. Now this isn't a high performance engine, so we're using stock main bolts. Remember, always torque from the center out with graduated torque settings. In our case, from 30 foot-pounds to the final 75. Well, with that, we can go ahead and install our rods and pistons. And hey, you don't have to have these plastic bolt boots to do the job. In fact, a couple of pieces of rubber holes will do the trick. In fact, even masking tape in a pinch. Here's a tip though, make sure the hoses are pointed outward. It'll guide onto the crank a lot better. All right, buddy, thanks a lot. Sure. Okay, remember dot facing forward. She's ready to go home. And we turn it over. All right, we take these off. I think I'll save them. Well, now these rod caps can go on, and you know you got the match right if these numbers here match. Okay, how about a little assembly lube there, sure. buddy? So we can get you proper torque. Okay, the nuts go on next. And Buddy the Torque Meister goes to work, and you know what the specs are? 40 foot-pounds. You sure? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Now you go sit down, and I'll finish up with the pistons. 
And when we get back from the break, we'll finish up this 283. Hey, welcome back. As you can see, I'm still here, but Joe and Mike took me to literally, and they went to sit down somewhere together. But that's okay, because I'm going to go ahead and show you how to finish this 283 up, because after all, I'm the brains behind this operation. Just kidding. But I'm the best looking, and as you can see, I'm fast too. This is our bypass valve with the new O-ring, then the oil filter adapter plate. Our oil pump from Summit comes with the pickup already welded in place. Then after we clean out the holes to prevent leaks, we can install the freeze plugs. Now the front oil galley plugs can go in. And here's a tip, use a hammer and a chisel to stake the plugs in place. Now I'm heating up the timing gear for a few minutes. And that way it slides right into place. Since our Edelbrock cam is a flat tap at hydraulic, it needs plenty of assembly lube and some oil in the journals. Our timing set also came from Edelbrock, including its double roller timing chain. If you're into saving money, and who's not these days, here's something that might surprise you. It could actually cost more to reuse these old stock iron heads than buy a brand new pair like these stock replacements we're going to use from World Products. That's when you take in all the machining and parts it would take to use these. Oh, by the way, these are brand new. That's got to be a good deal. Hey, handsome, these are heavy. Come on, help me. Now with Felpro gaskets laid down, these heavy heads can go in place. Then a little sealant on the ARP head bolts before we torque them down. Hey, Mr. Brainiac, do you want me to soak these in oil or go ahead and lube them? Now let's go ahead and lube them because we're going to go ahead and prime it later. Okay. These lifters came from Edelbrock, and we're using the same assembly lube we used on the camshaft and plenty of it. Now once these guys are in place, I can install this original valley breather with a few taps of a hammer. Okay, after cleaning the old push rods or installing new ones, you always want to look right down through the center hole and make sure there's no obstructions, because if there is, you'll have rocker failure. And don't forget to lubricate the lifter just prior to the push rod going in. Also, don't forget to lube the tips of the push rods, because if you don't, they will squeal like a pig. Whee! Now we can install these Summit Rockers. They have a 1-5 ratio and a full rollerized trunnion. Now make sure when you install them to have the flat up. Okay, valve adjustments next. The easiest way to do this is rotate your motor over until either one of the valves start to open. Let's see, in this case it's the exhaust. So our exhaust starts to open. We're going to adjust our intake. You can see how much it rocks back and forth. You want to adjust the nut down until there's no more rocking. Then go three quarters of a turn, tighter. Tighten up your set screw. And then tighten them both up together. And that'll lock that one down. So we'll go ahead and rotate the motor over. The intake starts to open. Catch it on the back side when she starts to close. Do the same thing to the exhaust. Okay, usually a machine shop will put these oil galley plugs in, but if they don't, just put some sealant on them and then install them. All right, right now I'm taping off the block so we can go ahead and paint it Chevy orange. And now Buddy's gonna install the timing cover. This Duplicolor engine enamel can withstand heat up to 500 degrees. Now the intake gaskets are held in place with a little silicone on the ends. Then, of course, a generous bead on the end pads. Now we can set this Edelbrock Performer EPS intake manifold down. We're giving our silicone a workout here on the intake bolts. Kevin brought us these old cast Edelbrock valve covers and he did a pretty good job painting them to match the block. Next, it's time for this harmonic balancer from Summit. And using some Loctite retaining compound and a good old block of wood, we hammer in a new oil filler neck. Finally, this factory valley breather that we're reusing. When Kevin and Ryan get their motor back, they're going to run this Edelbrock mechanical fuel pump. Now we're not going to need it since we're going to run the motor on the dyno, so I'll just install this block off plate. Now right now we have to take a break, but when we get back, you're going to see this motor finished off in the dyno room, and then we'll go ahead and make some pulls.
We're back and almost ready to run oh, this small there. block we just built. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what this little 283, a little better in stock, will put out. I say 250, 255. I'll go with you. After machining the original block, we gave it a stout yet no frills bottom end with new and refurbished rotating assembly components. Then new yet economical iron heads, a flat tappet hydraulic cam, and valve tray. Mike and Buddy applied their artistry with new orange paint before installing a new dual plane intake and harmonic balancer. Okay, we're gonna use a Proform electric water pump to cool this 283, and the guys at Trucks will take care of the accessory drive. Now, we already primed it for oil pressure, so we're getting really close to running this. Now, to feed it, we're gonna use this Edelbrock 600 CFM four barrel. Now, it's got air valve secondaries and an electric choke. Now, we can bolt up a set of these Summit headers to the block, install an Excel distributor, along with a set of their header plugs. And to finish up in here, a set of Taylor Thunderbolt wires. Most people probably think that leaded fuel went out with the A-Track, but it's still readily available, but only in a race fuel, which costs a lot more than unleaded fuel. One of our advantages by using the heads that we chose is it has hardened seats, which allows us to run any kind of unleaded fuel we want. Today, we're running this one on 87 octane. Here we go. This motor fired up on the first try. And after the usual warm-up, we're all set to make a run. Well, almost. Needs more timing. Man, 264 horsepower, 297 foot-pounds of torque. That's pretty impressive out of this little 283. I think it's about time we get Kevin and Ryan over here and let him see what it's worth. Is that nice move idle? Yeah. You sound good, too. Here she, here she goes. Yeah. Cross your fingers. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think? I'm guessing 262 horses. You think? That's my guess. I'd say 255. Yeah. I'd be happy with either one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, it did a lot better than I thought. 270 horsepower and 301 foot pounds of torque Sweet at 3,600. Man, that's better than I expected. Pretty Heck good. yeah. That'll make a great little engine for that truck. For a little yeah. stock rebuilt 283. Shoot, that's all we need. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a little pumpkin. Well, give them the dyno run sheet. Yeah, I want to see all that right. thing. Then I want to keep that. And got another sheet of paper well, for you. That? That's your bill. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, put it on our tab, right? Yeah. No, we'll let you know bill. we need a favor, too. Ooh. For that price, it comes installed, doesn't it? Yeah, no. it better. No. No. I bet that bill disappears. Yeah, it'll get lost uh, just like that horsepower file almost did. You'll see what we're talking about in a minute. Man, that's pretty good. Yeah, not bad at all. I was surprised. I'm going to show you something that's been seen by a few people before. We've had a dozen years of projects on horsepower. Some took a day, some took several days. But there was one project that's been unfinished for a year. Here in the Horsepower Files. Hey, any chance you recognize this car? Well, you're about to. it's not just another late model Mustang GT. It's actually a project car we called Stroker Stang last year, and it's finally back for a big power payoff. Now, we'll tell you why it took so long here in a little bit, but right now, let's get you up to speed. We broke some new ground by installing a Stroker kit on this late model Mustang. That is, after a baseline run with the stock 4.6 liter engine, making 265 horsepower at the rear wheels. And then the motor and transmission came out from the bottom. Later, at Huntsville Engine and Performance, they line hone the mains, hone the cylinders, polished and ported the heads, and machined them for a three-angle valve job. Back home, we installed the stroker kit, an eagle iron crank, eagle rods, and aluminum pistons from Aries. We also installed new cams from Crane, and as a bonus, added underdrive pulleys and long tube headers from BBK. Finally, we bolted up a new twin disc clutch from Zoom. Underneath, we installed a lighter for Danza drive shaft. For even better breathing, we added a throttle body, a cold air kit, and a shorty X-pipe with cats from BBK, plus mid-pipes and mufflers from Magnaflow. For better shifting, we installed a Pro 5.0 Super Shifter. To cap off the project, we had the lower GT sitting on spoke cast wheels from the tire rack and 
Yokohama Advance for rubber. This Mustang handles really well. Now it does have Eibach springs and Milstein shocks, plus larger wheels and tires. The real kicker is all the power this 302 three valve is putting to the ground. Okay, once again, you get to have all the fun, right? That's how it usually goes. Well, we're finally going to get to see what this 07 GT does on our chassis dyno, and hey, how you like our new aluminum portable ramp. Anyway, the reason it's taking so long is this. When we first fired it up after those upgrades, it made a terrible racket. So we sent it back to the owner at Eagle, and here's what the problem was. The factory cam phaser wasn't working with the bigger aftermarket cam, so major timing issues. Bottom line is, aftermarket cam equals aftermarket cam phaser. Well, at last, we get to see how this Mustang handles in corners like a thoroughbred. Plus, it made 378 horsepower, 374 foot-pounds of torque. Well, finally, we get to close the case on Project Stroker Stain. Older hot rods need to exhale to make good power and they also need to sound tough to make a good impression. Now Magnaflow makes performance exhaust systems like this one for a GMA body. Now they factory test them for a proper fit and they come with everything you need for an easy install. Like mandrel bent tubing to prevent restrictions and a straight through stainless steel muffler for a good tone, plus all the right hardware. Now the price is pretty right too, starting at about 655 bucks. If you've got an appetite for some weekend drag racing, here's a hearty way to feed your high-performance race motor. It's a 1,432 CFM carb from BLP Products that comes with a radius profile, enlarged throttle bores, billet metering blocks, and fully adjustable fuel circuits. But here's the cool part, a complete jet kit that allows two steps up or down for all those changes you have to make at the track. Now it comes slow tested and ready to go, all for a price of about $15.50. Well, speaking of carbs, next time we're going to show you a budget friendly way to upgrade a single inlet street carb and you ought to join us. We'll see you then.